Welcome to the second part of the webinar lecture series by the Taguig City University College of Education Online Learning Management System with the theme, Managing the Module Learning Approach and Teachers' Competency Needed to Adopt to the New Normal in the Higher Education. To start with, we have Professor Maria Cristina D. Reyes to open this webinar with a prayer. Let us put ourselves in the presence of the Lord. Dear Father, we thank you for everyone gathered here now. Thank you that you know each of us by name and have caused us to walk with you. We say that we are dependent on you and our trust is in you completely. As we surrender ourselves in adoration, we welcome you among us today and celebrating the gift of life that you have lavished upon each of us. We ask that you would open our ears so that we may hear your voice. Open our minds so that we may receive your eternal wisdom. Open our spirits so that we may know your leading and guidance. And open our hearts so that we may receive your wonderful love. Lord, we thank you for the speakers and facilitators. We pray that you will give them great inspiration as they share with us what you have placed on their hearts. We pray that you will fill them with courage and give them your peace. We ask all this in the glorious name of Jesus. Amen. Once again, good afternoon, everyone. I welcome everyone that's in attendance today to the second part of the webinar lecture series this time with the theme, Managing the Module Learning Approach and Teachers' Competency Needed to Adopt to the New Normal in the Higher Education. And thank you in advance for your interest and participation. Please stay with us until the end, for surely we will learn as one. Now, without further ado, I would like to introduce our first speaker, a licensed professional teacher. She is a graduate of Bachelor of Secondary Education, major in English in this institution, and is currently taking her master's degree at the same university. A young and vibrant professor, let's welcome Professor Bernadette B. Gomez. So, good afternoon everyone. I hope you can hear me loud and clear. Um, thank you for joining us in this afternoon's webinar. And we are going to talk about the managing the modular approach. I, I hope you learned something from this. So, we all understand the man that because of pandemic, there is an evolutionary change in terms of our educational system here in the Philippines that push every one of us, especially all of the school, to move from traditional classroom setting into what we call distance learning. So as part of it, as part of distance learning, so meron tayong um, 
the developments, itong tinatawag natin, the modules. Okay, so this morning again, we're going to talk about the managing the learning modular approach. And the topics that assigned to me are the following. So what is a module? What module versus textbooks? And what constitute a high quality learning module? So also included the things to consider in planning a module, roles of a teacher, and characteristics of module. So I want to share with you all the things that I have learned from the previous webinars that I participated from the Commission on Higher Education, Region 1 office webinar nila, as well as the Bibal group, and also in our yung workshop namin here at Taguig City University by President Juan Siberian. So to start with, let's define what is module. So module is specific type of learning resources that is essentially self-contained Self-instructional package, self-paced learning according to the student's need and ability. So actually, this learning um, was designed especially for individualized learning and for self-study. And then it's also covered either a single element or group of content elements of subject matter or a skill or recent development based on program instruction. So each module event, it contains different units, then each unit meron tayong mga different lessons. And then later on, our next speaker will go to discuss to you the uh, components and structures dito sa module natin. Next, modular approach to teaching requires spacing and successfully learning outputs based on specific learning objectives. So now, in lesson planning preparation, objectives are very much important. Dito rin sa module, it's very much important. And in doing a module, the objectives must be clearly stated, and it also be simple, and must realistic, attainable by our learners. So lagi kong sinasabi sa mga students ko, in doing a lesson objective, dapat, ano siya, dapat complete package. Paano magkakaroon ng complete package? So you need to include all the domains of learning. Ano ba yung domains of learning? Diba? We have the cognitive, yung knowledge base. We also have affected, yung values integration natin. And lastly, the psychomotor, which is the application sa subject matter natin. The things that we have learned from our topic. So, lastly, it enables the learner to have control over his learning and accept greater responsibility for learning. So, it demands greater maturity naman on the part of our learners. So the module is more appropriate to more mature students like our students in the College of Education, mga college students. So tamang-tama itong module, ano natin, approach na, gagamitin natin. So let's proceed, module versus textbooks. So some of my students kasi, they're asking what is the difference between modules and textbooks, why we don't, why we need to have modules if meron naman tayong mga existing textbooks na ginagamit? So, ito na po yun, the difference between module and textbooks. The first one, so, dito naman, sa textbooks natin, these are divided into chapters. And like sa modules natin, units, it is divided into different units. So, sa chapter kasi sa textbooks natin, more on specific siya. And like sa modules natin, it is divided into units. It's part, it covered a broad areas. Then under the different units, meron tayong mga different lessons. And later on, Mom Archie will going to discuss about the components of the module. Next, <clears throat> it includes study guides sa module, but sa textbooks do not include study guides. So, Walang study guide sa textbooks because in face-to-face, -face, diba textbook ginagamit natin in face-to-face -face learning? In face-to-face -face learning kasi, si teacher is andyan naman to give guidance to our students. And tuwing may exam, the teacher serve as our proctor naman, diba? They're going to, the teacher going to discuss um, what you are going to do to the activities. So, andyan naman si teacher. Unlike kasi sa module writing natin, ayan, kailangan, it is... Ayan, may study guide tayo kung anong dapat gagawin ni students from the start up to the last. From how they explore the content of the module 
and up to giving the activities, anong dapat gawin ni student bago mag-start and after the activities. Kailan na kayo ito doon sa module. Next, okay, it includes study tips sa module sa textbooks. Wala siya, hindi siya naka-included. Kasi usually, there is a module, there's some study tips included. Ako, some of my lessons doon sa module, naglalagay ako ng study tips. Example, I will let my students to get pen and paper, ayan, to take down notes, all the important words doon sa lesson. Ayan, sometimes, nag-share din ako ng link kung para link ng site, apps, or videos that's very much helpful doon sa lesson namin. And next, both the modules and textbooks include diagrams and picture. And lastly, it includes numerous activities. So part ng module sa textbook naman have few or no activities. So in textbook, more on content based kasi siya. So and generally, the teacher to guide the students. And like some modules kasi more on activity siya from the start up to the last. So we have pre-assessment, meron din tayong post-test at the last, then every lesson, we have a lot of activities nakalagay. It's one way to monitor, to monitor our students' progress. So after module versus text, okay. Okay, provide feedback answers, part na module. Sa textbooks naman natin, do not provide feedback. So in module, we can include some feedback. Example, Kapag natapos na ni students yung lesson or unit doon sa module nila, you can also include their congratulations, you are now done with the lesson one. Pwede ka na. Pwede ka na include that in your module. So, next. Okay, sport na module are tightly structured. Sa textbook naman, more loosely structured. Kasi in textbook, again, paulit-ulit tayo kasi si teacher is nandyan to help the student to amplify what is printed doon sa textbook. So, sa button module naman, dahil wala si teacher, the students are working alone, doon sa module, just doon sa module. So, ayan tayo. So, lahat dyan, may, may mga ano tayo dyan, may mga structure na sinusundan <clears throat> from the start up to the last nung doon sa mga activity, kung paano explore yung content. Next, have an, the module, have as audience the individual learner, and then, sa textbook natin, serve as a dual audience, the learner and the teacher. Okay. Always remember that in module, um, your audience, actually, our students are actually treated as individual learner. That's the reason why we always make use the word you, okay? The pronoun you. Okay, yeah, we can use the first person point of view doon sa module natin because on the way on how we address our learner. Instead of saying, the student will be able to, at the end of the lesson, the student will be able to, ganon. Instead of saying that, we can use the, the stu, you will be able, at the end of the lesson, you will be able, you use the pronoun you in addressing our learners. And then lastly, attempt to meet all the needs of the learner. And then sa textbook natin, the learner has a teacher who will be able to amplify the printed text. So lastly, in textbook, teacher is there to guide our students in terms of understanding the topic. Diba? Diyan naman si teacher to explain what is in written in the textbook. But sa module natin, unlike sa module, we use, we need, wala naman si teacher and the students are working alone, study alone, answering the module itself. So we need to use simple words. <clears throat> Especially in giving the students instruction kung paano nila gagawin yung activity. And if there are some vocabulary terms na mahirap, so you can also include definition of terms doon sa module mo para hindi na mag ano pa yung student na magsusearch pa sa dictionary, magsusearch pa ng meaning about this, or kasi magabibigyan ng confusion sa part ng learners to. Kaya we can use simple words natin doon sa module natin. Especially in giving the instruction doon sa mga activity. Okay, after that, let's proceed what constitute a high-quality learning module. So, ito naman, I wanted to share the things that I learned from Vibal Group naman, webinars naman. So, first, learning activities are carefully designed to address specific objectives. So, when we talk about learning objectives, 
it has to be carefully designed to address the specific when we talk about learning activities rather we need to address to the uh, specific learning objectives meaning the objectives must be aligned to the activities ng students natin and the activities must be aligned with the objectives vice versa siya kasi these two must go hand in hand so to determine the success of our students who are engaged in learning process of doing the module so next learners must demonstrate mastery of content so how will you determine the mastery of content doon sa mga learners natin of course meron tayong assessment and evaluation by the help of this we can monitor we can track yung progress ng mga learners natin di ba sa module we have a lot of activities per lesson doon in a one way to monitor their progress next Learners must receive immediate confirmation of mastery of the objectives. So, <clears throat> mastery is very much important, especially in doing a module. The students will do it alone or working alone. So, we need to have different ways naman to monitor our learners' progress. It's either through a scheduled conference. Pwede naman, di ba? Kahit na modular approach, syempre, the teachers always there naman have the time para maano yung progress ng learners natin. So, meron din naman tayong GC to monitor our students. So, to monitor our students, kailangan may mahalaga din yung feedbacks, giving feedbacks to them about their output, if they are on the right track, if they are correct, yung output ng students natin, or if they need an improvement. Okay? It is not advisable in giving feedback na direct mo sasabihin na kay students na yung result na output niya is ay, mali-mali yan. Okay, hindi naman direct mo sasabihin. But rather, you can transpose it into saying na you can still improve it. O kaya we can also use na tinatawag nating sandwich method. Siguro sa of my students, explain ko na itong about the sandwich method. So, in giving feedback, di ba? Positive, negative, and then, and always in positive way. So, example, um, pag mali yung sagot si students, pwede mo sabihin, Let's start with the positive one. You have an idea about that. Tap tapos, eh, doon mo na ipapasok yung si negative. So, when mo sabihin, however, your answer is really not related or ano, connected, something, ano, ganon. And then, always remember to end in a positive one. Okay? But overall, you did a good job in finishing your output. Pwede ganon. So, yan yung natawag natin, a sandwich method. Na dapat natin ginagamit, No? in giving feedback to our students. Lastly, yan, when the learner has difficulty understanding the material or fails to master the objectives, he or she may ask the instructor for help. This means that the teacher always have an available time to do consultation with their learners, okay? To ensure the students get support to their teacher, guidance from their teacher, and we have different ways naman to to ano, to reach our students, meron naman tayo GC, we have Facebook, we have Zoom, okay, na magagamit natin. And it's important that even though the student and the teacher are physically apart, the communication is still there. Okay, and that's what constitutes a high-quality learning module. So now, let's proceed to things, the things that we need to consider in planning the module. Number one, identify the needs of target students. Okay, you should know for whom the module is intended. Tama. Kasi we need to consider who are our learners. And ano ba types of learners do we have? What are those circumstances of our students that we need to consider in planning, designing our activities, in planning the structure of our module? Because our design must be appropriate to our target students. Dapat alam natin yung mga kakayahan ng mga students natin, yung level ng students natin, yung literacy level nila, yung study skills ng mga learners natin, and their learning situation, and so on. Dapat alam natin yan. Next, choose the topic. Okay, the topic again must be aligned with the course description, with your objectives, and the objectives must be aligned doon sa mga ano. Okay. Our objectives in particular course of subject must be aligned dapat doon. And then, formulate the objectives. Ayan. 
in formulating learning objectives, it must be smart, di ba? Lagi-lagi yung smart, specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, time-bound, and as much as possible, it should be short, it should be clear, but comprehensively um, clarify the student's general areas covered doon sa module natin. And again, for holistic learning sa mga bata, you should include the domains of learning, the cognitive, affective, and psychomotor. Next, let's proceed to the select learning experiences. <clears throat> Always remember in selecting learning experiences, activities for our student, it should be aligned to our objective, then appropriate to our target learners. Kaya ba nilang sagutan to? Ayan, masyado bang madali to? Okay, dapat ganar. And then, decide the format and components of the module. So, yung format and components later on will be discussed by Ma'am Arch. And then lastly, your module must be drafted and also you need to revise it. So now let's proceed to the <coughs> roles of a teacher. <coughs> okay, <coughs> roles of the teacher natin. Meron tayong the teacher roles is to be to guide their student, to facilitate their student, and serve as the counselor for our student. Though even though in a, we are in a modular approach, we the teachers need to be to be there to facilitate and to guide our students, especially if our learners have difficulty in understanding the material or if fails to master the objectives. So the learner may ask their teacher for help. Pradyon. And also interact with individual students. So teachers always have an available time, nasabi ko lagi, with their students. It's important that communication is still there, even the student and the teacher are physically apart. Then we have different ways naman to um, reach out our students. Lastly, to evaluate. So one of the major tasks of our the teacher is to check what the learners have learned, diba? to check their works their output and also in checking their output the feedback is very much important to your students syempre kung tama na ba sila kung na mali na ba yung mga ginagawa ano nila mga output nila okay feedback is important okay now let's proceed to characteristics of module the first one is independent so sa module kasi it is individualized learning in a way that we give our learners the opportunity to work on their own, to learn on their own. So, self-contained naman natin, the module has self-contained instructional activities naman that allow our learners to progress themselves on their own pace naman. Pwede niyan sila magsagot kung nasa bahay lang, kung saan nila mas comfortable na magsagot. Okay. And then, self-instructional naman, it is also has instructional activities naman to guide our learners independently in achieving doon sa mga objectives ng lesson na sinet nating objectives doon sa lesson or doon sa subject. And well-defined and clearly defined objectives. It has a well-defined sa module. It has a well-defined instruction, a well-defined objective which is clearly stated what our learners going to do from the start up to the last part of the module. And concern individual differences. So, sa module, we have a lot of assessment, pre-assessment, post-test, a lot of activity naman per lessons. Ayan, to cater the, ano, um, to cater individual differences. So, kailangan talaga yung mga activities mo engaging dun sa module na to cater individual differences. Systematically organized learning opportunities. Ayan. We have, um, we have, ano naman, systematic structure or format that we follow naman to make sure that every part of the module ay may natututunan yung bata. And lastly, active participation of learners. So, because it is more learner-centered than the teacher-centered, the teacher will serve as the facilitator and the one, and the one who is really engaged in the learning process, is, which is our the learner, our learner. Okay, so that's all. I just want to end my presentation with this quote. If you are determined to learn, no one can stop you. 
So it means whatever challenges that we are facing nowadays because of the pandemic, if we really want to learn, no one can stop us. So that's why most of us participated in different online courses, in different webinars. Diba? Nakaka-proud kasi we always find ways to make ourselves productive. We always find ways on how to improve ourselves as a teacher and as a student. So that's all. Thank you for listening and God bless everyone. Thank you, Professor Bernadette Gomez, for a comprehensive discussion. We will surely apply the things you have shared. Indeed, Moodle learning approach is a trend. Even without the present pandemic, it has been used largely for non-formal learning contexts. Thank you for clearly outlining the difference between some confounded terms and materials surrounding the modular approach. Okay, giving her a virtual round of applause. Now, our second speaker, also a licensed professional teacher and had obtained her master's degree in teaching English language at Philippine Normal University. She is also the newly appointed program chair for BSc English, a humble and kind professor, Professor Archie L. Ferrer. <laughs> Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'd like to welcome you to the second half of our topic webinar about managing the modular learning approach. Okay, so I'll be tackling to you concepts and teaching strategy, the module use, components and structure, and principles and activities in a module. All right, so we begin with the uh, module or the concept of a module. A concept of a module was drawn from learning dualism, particularly as a learner-centered approach, since we are already now in the outcomes-based education or the OBE. Apparently, in a learner-centered approach, uh, using the modular approach or modules, in the curriculum, there is a high level of student choice in terms of pace, time, and learning style. Meaning to say, uh, the students are in control of how they are going to study. Student is also considered as an active participant in a modular approach because greater efforts exist, is exerted in learning and understanding the lesson. So the power in learning primarily lies in the students. And this is all in contrary to the teacher-centered approach, which is the conventional class where low-level student choice is seen since the traditional pedagogy is spoon-feeding and apparently students are passive receivers of information. More of the power or load in learning lies primarily in the teacher, in the teacher-centered approach. So we go now to... Uh, the use of our modules. Okay. Modules can be used in different setup, not only because we're experiencing the pandemic. It has been existent since in the 1980s, even without much of technology. No, hindi lang po ito na uso ngayon dahil we cannot see face to face. Okay. But here you will see in our screens. 
So there are three types wherein we use modules. The first one is in the usual classes or reviews. Like for example, if we have a big class with 100 or less enrollees, but we only have one lecture available, then we can use modules to facilitate learning. The professor can use the modular approach um, in a lecture hall or in an, aud an, an, an auditorium, especially in big universities. We can see this example in, maybe if you're watching movies, right? We have the lecture in, a, in an auditorium or a lecture hall. We also have this, of course, in our universities, like for example, in uh, UP, uh, Ateneo, and I think it's also in PUP. I also have experienced this in PNU during our in-house review. We are given modules every week for us to study and uh, have a drills. And also, we answer that after a week you know, for our feedback. Another use of the modular approach or the modules is in OUs or Open University or Distance Learning. As I said, modules have been used long before in distance learning, like the correspondence school. So if you are far from the university or if you are abroad and wanted to continue your studies, then we can use the modules. So uh, this one is um, the long distance before they use cassette tapes. They send packets or they send the modules together with cassette tapes. No, but now these days, we are already updated, so we can use the audio and video in the classes or in the internet. So we said they send back uh, the exams through emails, but now we take the exams or the assessment online. So similarly, we are also having distance learning now that we are locked down. Teacher will be giving you modules or materials for you to study and use the computer interface for instruction and evaluation. So modules are used also in homeschool studying. I will not further elaborate on this because I know most of you have already experienced this. If you are uh, registered in Percipio, sponsored by the Taguig City Government, if you know Canvas or Coursera and other learning platforms wherein you can learn and earn certificates at home. Okay, so we move now to the next, <clears throat> the teaching strategy. Okay, uh, teaching strategy is less effort in part of the teacher, of course, but the teacher has to discuss these four essential things uh, when, you are, when you are given a module. The first one is, of course, the time frame. No? Effective facilitation is the best description in using a modular approach. Teachers should be guiding students on how to go through the modules given to them. So basically, the first one is the time frame. And if you will see at the right corner of your screen, you will see the hours that should be spent by the student in a week and the contact hours of the professor or the teacher in them. So yung contact hours is not necessarily face-to-face. -face, no? It is the hour of scheduled instruction given to students by the professor. So it can be as a moderator using a group mail or a group chat, let's say. And also, um, we have a specific time set for video calls. I will further show examples to you later on. Okay, so the other uh, one that the teacher has to discuss is, of course, the objectives. As you see in uh, the, what's this, the example of our course outline, okay, we also have the objectives together with the uh, rational and the aims. Okay, ideally, objective should be specified based on the three domains of learning, which is cognitive, affective, and psychomotor, referring to the Bloom's taxonomy. Okay, but however, in some other cases, we can only use two. Let's say, for example, if you're going to be uh, teaching uh, a math, or so this that is a skill, or maybe physical education, or some other technical or vocational uh, courses. Let's say, for example. Okay, another thing that the teacher has to explain are the activities and the way of assessment. So it should be facilitated by the professor as to what will the student expect to do while reading the module and what kind of assessment 
to me again on our uh, screen on the right side we have the module content but that is not the full uh, module type okay so that is just a course outline we will further discuss the the type of module that we are using and so we also have the assessment there so there is a listening skill an oral skill in a reading and writing given okay so those are the things that the teacher has to explain and facilitate during the use of the modular approach okay so we go now here for uh, the time frame okay so we will do more specific or be particular in the time frame because even though the uh, the learning is solely dependent on the student so of course we cannot really leave it to them no there is still a deadline in doing the module so here is an example module in a Coursera or in the Coursera here are the estimated time of the student for him to finish the lesson and sections of the module though the student has the choice of course and the power uh, the teacher will still guide him because there is a deadline as what I said so if you can see uh, in the course schedule there is a 15 minute and to 10 minute to 15 minute uh, time needed for one lesson under a module okay in the left part in the course summary okay so there is also uh, a date given like February 25 I hope you see it 2019 and there is a due date or due time which is 12 59 p.m. so in in every module uh, studied you will have one week to uh, finish that before you go to the next module so that is um, being um, monitored by the teacher or the facilitator okay so here we go now to the components of a module typically uh, you can see there in your screen a module has the introduction okay and the introduction sometimes also encompasses the objectives the rational and the purpose you know, of uh, whatever is the content of a module another thing is uh, the activities that provides way for students to engage with each other in discussion and with the information and concepts given to them so we also have uh, opportunities to practice in the exercises which they can apply analyze or synthesize new information and may include work or practice exercises in laboratory if not in laboratory then maybe they can watch a video uh, wherein if they are doing an experiment okay so number four is a chance to reflect and articulate students acquired knowledge which includes formal or informal assessment of module objectives so we can also consider this as the formative and summative test no? so we also have another component which is the feedback so feedback is when students are have accomplished uh, the module objectives now the teacher will be looking at their finished work if they have been doing the activities given to them and then the last one of course is uh, the additional resources for students to extend their learning through enriching activities and other evaluation type of evaluation so this is only typical components of a module however in a more comprehensive and broad modules uh, we have the overview now, overview or introduction uh, to the module might contain as what I said still the objective and uh, the content the highlight of the content and the module relevance and describes how it fits into the course you know, for example uh, whatever um, subject they, they, that the students are taking now and it provides a brief overview of what will they be doing in the whole uh, course or module another thing is the module or the in new information that will build on their previous knowledge how they will 
learn. Okay, so sometimes there are also key words and emphasis or which emphasizes the caution, uh, the students to be cautioned that which they will encounter in the module. Okay, in addition, there are also reading materials, visuals, and other assignments which also have due dates that they have to work on. And lastly, they will also be seeing summary and reflection which will be highlighted by the students no? as expected that they will be doing from the objectives. Okay. So we go now to the essential components further. Okay, so let's see it in, uh, in a visual form. So we have here, uh, I think this is a Percipio account. They are also using a module. So we have there the content, the overview, and the resources. Okay. So, he, but, but here in the Percipio, so they don't have much of the activities except for that you have to watch um, how they do it and uh, take some quizzes as an evaluation. Okay, so we go now to the structure of a module. Okay, structure of modules most often looks like this. So it begins with a title. It then is followed by the introduction or an overview. So, introduction or overview insights or encourage students to get interested in the lesson. Okay, another one or, or another is the objectives. Okay, sometimes overview, introduction, or the objective is only in one paragraph, describing what will be the content of the lesson or the module itself. Okay, and so we also have the pretest to check the level or the knowledge of the student or the students and then we have the learning activities okay and we also have the lesson topic okay and then we have the formative test summative as a feedback to the to or to the professor or to the teacher and then we have the summary assignment and references so here on the next uh, slide, okay, we see an example of uh, the module structure. Okay, so this is uh, the type of module structure that we have tried to follow in the College of Education. So we have, we uh, rename the module as unit and then there are sub lessons in it. So we have the learning outcomes. Okay, so this is the expected outcome when you finish one module or one unit. Then we also have the question, what do you know? So this is just a diagnostic test or like a pretest to evaluate uh, the student's ability. And then what you will do is, uh, what is the outcome, expected outcome of uh, the student? Or what is expected of the students to do after they have read the module. Okay, so in between uh, the three lines, the lesson or the learning outcomes and the nutshell, we have the subcategories which are lesson one, two, and three. The containing also some activities, not only reading, but also links in videos and other lessons that they can um, study and so also some tests that they can uh, practice and undergo so we have also the the um, the ending of one unit there which begins in a nutshell so this is a short summary of the entire module and then there is a short summative test and then there are references for additional uh, studies okay so we move now to the content of the lesson under a unit. Okay. So the content of the lesson under a unit, okay, same thing. We have the lesson outcomes or the objectives. And then we have the five E's, which, which is the excite. Okay. This one will spur also the interest of the student. 
the explore is uh, the lesson or pictures, diagrams that will be encountered by the student for them to uh, learn even more. And then we have experience, okay? And that this will contextualize all the ideas and concepts based on the lesson. And they can also do some activities using application on the internet. And next to it is the examine, which provides evaluation of the lesson outcomes. And lastly is the exchange, which is the generalization or summary of the lesson. So here is the typical structure of a module. So now we go to the principle of a module. I think uh, Ma'am Gomez already have mentioned uh, what are the concerns of doing a module. But here, uh, we dig deeper to the principle or how, how they have structured a module. We base it on the five E's, which is um, five teaching or five E is teaching and learning model. Okay, so it promotes collaborative, active learning, wherein students work together to solve problems and investigate new concepts by asking questions, observing, analyzing, and drawing conclusions. So it is being used because it is effective in guiding teaching and learning because of the progress through the five phases, which I, was, or I mentioned earlier ago, the exchange, explore, explain, elaborate, and evaluate sometimes it is also renamed no if you will notice um, in the module structure that we use we have we use the words excite explore experience examine and exchange okay so we go now to the principles underlying the planning of learning activities so we just we don't just put activities in a module uh, for the sake of students to have fun or learn no pero we still consider things uh, less like what was mentioned a moment ago uh, before we do a module or what appropriate learning activity should be put in a module the first one of course is plan the learning activities on the basis of the entry behavior of the learners so we have to gauge the knowledge no, prior to giving the module because that will be the starting point or the training program for the student. So we cannot give a very difficult module to a low um, level student. Okay, so maybe we can use a ladderized form of learning. Then we base also the learning activities on the terminal behavior or what is desired outcome you know, or response from the student. So we already have objectives and that is we, that's where we can base the terminal behavior that we want to have. Okay, so we also base the learning activities on the needs of the learner. So we have to consider the age, the level, and the cognitive ability. And of course, uh, we have to make careful gradation, as what I said, yung ladderize, no? slowly but surely and incrementing exercises. So we also have to provide adequate um, scope for individual differences. So we have to vary exercises. Hindi naman for unit 1, we will do the same exercises in unit 2. Or in module 1, we will be doing the same activity in module 2. So we have to have a variation for the module to be interesting. So we have to provide also adequate time to monitor with his progress. Again, the activity matches the time frame given. So we cannot uh, limit them to do a one week uh, reading if the module that was given to them is very difficult. So we have to consider also their pace, you know, how or when are they going to finish, and the teacher will be the one to monitor and facilitate that. Okay, so that's it for the second half of our uh, modular learning approach. I hope you have learned something, and uh, as I quote, you know, learning is the only thing the mind never exhausts never fears and never regrets according to Leonardo da Vinci. 
So in the modular approach, uh, learning is really a big effort for the student. So we should not be exhausted uh, in studying and learning. Again, good afternoon to everyone and have a blessed day. Thank you, Professor Archie Ferrer, for sharing important concepts, structure, principles, and activities for an effective use of modular approach. As much as we want to gather face-to-face, -face, the pandemic hinders us to do so, and we are all forced to exhaust all available materials to still deliver the needed service, and modular approach is one of the best options, and though unlikely to what we used to be, but we are in this together. Let us work cooperatively, you the learners and ask your teachers, to yield a productive result. Once again, thank you, Professor Archie Ferrer. Now, I may ask uh, the participants to comment down your questions to be answered later on in the open, for open forum. Okay, at this point, we are down to the last but definitely not the least speaker. She is a licensed professional teacher who graduated at Nueva Ecija University of Science and Technology with a bachelor's degree in secondary education, major in technology and livelihood education, and a master's degree in education, major in educational management at the Gig City University. For seven years now, she has been teaching professional education subjects and specialization subject at the Gig City University. In pursuits of personal and professional development, she participated in different seminars and training relevant to her expertise. She is also serving as the concurrent CED faculty president and coordinator for Educational Technology Laboratory, one of the outstanding faculty members of this university, working with genuine passion and wholehearted dedication toward her profession. Let us welcome Professor Edita C. Mateo. Blessed day everyone, let me discuss to you the topic the teacher's competence is needed to adapt to the new normal in higher education. This pandemic is a litmus test for schools. A lot of schools rapidly transitioned to online learning due to lockdowns that were enforced in a matter of days. Schools did not have much time to prepare and were caught in the moment as school leaders and teachers went back to their drawing boards to plan out how the learning should continue despite the school closures. The role of the teacher is broadening and becoming more demanding, especially in our new normal education. Teachers are expected to use a wide variety of methods, tools, and approaches and to tailor them to the learner's needs. They also need to have competencies and skills necessary to create a positive environment and work collaboratively with other stakeholders with, within and outside the school to provide timely support to learners. It is often said that mediocre teacher tells, the good teacher explains, the superior teachers demonstrate, and the great teacher inspires. Almost everyone who ever wondered how to be a good teacher has also wondered how to inspire learners to perform at their best. And when it comes to delivering an effective training program, the skills and competency of a good teacher can make all the difference. Many people think that training is an easy as knowing the subject matter and being able to communicate well. 
Well, you absolutely needed both qualities. They are hardly enough to make an effective teacher. So what other teacher's competencies are needed to adapt to the new normal in higher education? Look at the pictures. Can you imagine a teacher who is not good at explaining concepts? Or one does not pay attention to the concerns of a learner? Marami kasing mga teacher ngayon yung parang kung ano yung concern ng learner, parang nadi-disregard na lang. So in our new normal, we need to pay attention to the concerns of our learner's need. Okay. These are all barriers in or to teaching and the responsibility rests with you, the teacher. When we are communicating with our students, whether in a face-to-face -face class or an online class, we are communicating to give information or get information to gain understanding and build relationship. Communication is the first hurdle for those of us who have been thrust into online teaching. How do we keep in touch with our students? That will be exactly the big question of the teacher right now during pandemic. Discussion boards, live chats, emails, and video calls are the new normal. But no tool will work when you have got a confused student on one end and a struggling teacher on the other hand. Thankfully, there are some easy steps that you can take to make sure neither your instruction nor your relationships get lost in translation. Here's what you need to do. Your communication with the student can be via text, video, and or audio. Each method has its own strengths and limitations. With regard to text, composing messages via text is possibly the most efficient way to communicate with students online, but it doesn't mean it is the best way. Without body language or tone of voice, you will need to do extra effort to ensure your instructions and feedback do not become too impersonal. Kasi nga kapag via text lang yung message natin, it sometimes happen, iba yung nagiging interpretation ng reader or ng receiver. Okay. With regards to video, videos are a great way to stay connected. Students will feel much closer to you if they can see your face and hear your voice, katulad ng ginagawa natin ngayon. However, they will also need reliable technology for downloading or streaming. So you, you will want to assess whether this is possible for all the members of your class. Using audio, a quick voice recording is an easy way to provide personal communication to your student. Just ensure that recordings are clear and concise. If you have an important message for the whole class, text might be a more reliable option. Avoid miscommunication and the need to repeat instruction by giving clear messages straight to the point. So ito yung kailangan natin gawin ngayon during pandemic time. We need to give a clear message para sa ating mga students, especially when giving the instructions. Here are some simple rules to abide by. Remember, less is more. Be clear. Use private communication for a sensitive topic. Check the student receive your message. And the last one is the learning assessment. Remember, less is more. Bullet points, lists, and white space are so much better than walls of text. Chunk your text visually with paragraphs so it is easier for a student to process, especially if you are dealing with multiple subjects in a single message. So, mas maganda, mas clear yung message natin sa ating estudyante. Hindi yung punong-puno tayo ng message, isa lang naman pala yung gusto natin iparating sa mga bata. Okay? Number two, we have, or we should need to become clear in our instructions, in our communication. Okay, reduce the risk of confusion by cutting back on sophisticated or unnecessary language. Tailor it to your student reading level instead. For example, you are issuing instructions via video, use some text too. Have a summary of the instructions on a visible whiteboard or piece of paper so that the student can extract the essentials. Ano nga ba yung dapat natin gawin as a teacher kapag may mga sensitive topics na kailangan natin sabihin sa mga estudyante? Okay, if you are delivering sensitive feedback or addressing an individual student issue, do so in a, in a way that is not visible to the rest of the group. 
in that way, may iwasan natin yung mapahiya yung mga estudyante natin. You can use email, private messaging, or schedule an online call for your students. This, uh, to do that, it can build trust and safety in the online learning space. Learning management system often indicate how many students have seen a posted message, so take note of the numbers. If students are not seeing your messages or they are not doing what have been asked, revise your communication strategy to ensure that messages get through. Ask your student for feedback on what works and what does not. So, hindi naman siguro masama na i-assess natin yung mga estudyante natin. Ano nga ba yung nakakalating sa kanila at hindi? Okay? So, we have last one is the learning assessment. Okay, bakit kailangan ng learning assessment? Learning assessment is an important factor to consider, especially now, in our new normal education. Assessment helps teachers and students. Frequent assessment allows teachers to see in their teaching has been effective and allows teachers to ensure students learn what they need to know to meet the course's learning objective. Okay? Formative assessment should be given or administered by the teacher through synchronous and asynchronous form, which is uh, na-discuss naman ng mga unang presenter natin or ng mga teacher natin. It's maybe synchronous via Zoom or the asynchronous via Google Classroom. Okay, ito yung pinaka big challenges as a teacher. Okay, for many educators, the transition from teaching in a physical classroom to a fully virtual environment is the new experience and possess several challenges. Apart from connectivity and technological access, social interaction can be also limited. The ability to adapt plays a significant role in helping teachers meet the demands of their work. This is particularly important in these trying times when the coronavirus outbreak has led to unprecedented disruption, not just in education but also in almost all aspects of human life. Okay, the first one, we should need to become familiarized themselves with technology as a teacher. The key for many teachers is to choose a platform that is familiar to them and their students. Knowing the capabilities and limitations of the tools is used allows efficient use of time and seamless exchange of information. And more attentive to their students' needs. The number one barrier teachers are facing and the lack of connectivity less advantage student have at home. We should address this as a teacher by creating opportunities to encourage student collaboration and discourse. Discussion boards, which provide a great venue for idea sharing and commonly utilized while designing assignments using shareable online documents, allow students to collaborate in a small group. Of course, we should need to keep engagement up or keeping engagement up. Just as in any ordinary classroom setting, teachers need to grab students' attention and keep them engaged. To, uh, to do this, many teachers are segmenting lectures in short sequences and asking quick questions to check comprehension. Sometimes happen, the teacher itself injecting humor and creativity to lesson can also help. Okay, we have collaborating with other teachers. Ako, talaga ginagawa ko to. Pag hindi ako alam, I ask somebody na kasama ko sa trabaho kung paano ginagawa. Hindi naman nakakahiyang manghingi ng help kung yun naman yung makakabuti sa'yo as a teacher. Okay? Always be open-minded. Teachers are aware that they are not in this alone. Many are coming up with creative approaches to learning by sharing ideas and talking to other teachers. Through collaboration, Teachers can also identify what is working and what is not. A passion for continuous learning. By continuously learning, a teacher can explore different ways of learning styles, learn effective methods to engage learners and provide the latest insight and best practices. Their passion for continuous learning can be reflected in the quality of training they provide. 
They can also be a role model for the learners and inspire them to pursue lifelong learning. Okay, the last one. We should need to analyze and improve again and again and again. Sabi nila, the best teachers constantly ask themselves, what makes a good teacher? They are not only focused on developing their learners but also developing themselves. Teachers can improve their performance by taking advantage of surveys and other forms of feedback. Great teachers do not shy away from constructive feedback but take it as an opportunity to examine their method and do better the next time around. Good teachers don't just improve themselves, they also evaluate their training materials regularly. All the, or irrelevant materials are phased out in favor of content that is more engaging and aligned with learner feedback about the course. Okay, kindly watch this uh, short video. is only a tool to enhance the teaching and learning process. Some competencies that have been discussed can help the educators to adapt to the new normal in higher education, but always bear in our mind that having those competencies are not sufficient to be an effective and efficient teacher during this time of pandemic or a new normal. Being a compassionate teacher who can teach with the heart can make all the difference who will succeed in academic is not the smartest, not the strongest, not the wealthiest, but the most adaptable who can adjust and meet the challenges of a pandemic like in education arena. Only those teachers will adapt and survive the challenges of online learning. And that will be all. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Maceo, for discussing the needed competencies a teacher should possess 
not just to deliver what is needed to be delivered, but to deliver that service with the heart. Everyone of us is not exempted to the challenges that this pandemic had brought. Even to the teachers, and especially to the students, our empathy should be in the maximum level during this time. Once again, thank you, Professor Edita C. Mateo. Now, uh, we will read some questions from our participants. From Miss Maria Clariza Cruz. Hindi po namin maiiwasan na may mga batang mahirap mag-cope up sa modular approach. What if that particular pupil keeps on failing the assessment? Is there any approach that you would recommend po? From Maria Clariza Cruz, Hindi po namin maiiwasan na may mga batang mahirap mag-cope up sa modular approach. What if that particular pupil keeps on failing the assessment? Is there any approach that you would recommend po? Good afternoon, this is Professor Ferrer. Uh, actually, there are many approaches in teaching. However, as of this time, modular approach is being uh, suggested no, by uh, most of the education institutions because uh, sa modular approach, po kasi we can um, retake or take the test again and again. If you will notice, sa mga modules that are given in the online, Pwede po tayo mag-retake ng mag no? But more to that, we can also give references or supplemental activities wherein the student can learn kasi we have a lot of um, means on how to teach the students now. Not only mere reading, but they, maybe they can also watch videos. And of course, there should be the support of the teacher and also the parents who are working from home or who are uh, studying with the students. Yon. I hope that it satisfies you, ma'am. Okay, another question from Ms. Jennifer Taberna. How to collab if wala pong great connectivity? I mean, since no face-to-face -face at hindi masyadong magkakilala ang mga bata, what approach po kaya ang the best to promote socialization to lead collaboration? Okay, how to collab? It depends upon minsan sa teacher and then it's not about the connectivity yung gagamitin natin. Kung pwede din kasing gumamit tayo ng true text katulad ng diniscuss ko kanina, may kung pwede nating i-reach out yung mga estudyante natin. So, minsan may mga, di ba, parang may text or kung pwede tawagan natin or kung pwede din naman natin na use of videos or recording para kung magkaroon man sila ng connectivity inside their room, mapapanood at mapapanood pa rin nila yon. And then, meron din tayong messenger na kung saan may mga free, free data na makakapag-communicate uh, pa rin o makakapagbigay pa rin tayo ng information sa mga bata. So, as a teacher, siguro ang great responsibility natin is to keep our student engaged doon sa ating uh, new normal education ngayon. Kasi, Aminin man natin or hindi, ang hirap talagang mag-adjust. Kami din as a teacher, nahihirapan kami mag-adjust. Pero yun yung kinakailangan natin. So kung ano man yung pwedeng maging resources na gamitin natin para lang uh, meron tayong uh, tawag doon, connection with our student, gagawin natin at gagawin. Yun yung isang role and responsibility being a teacher. Hindi lang tayo nagtuturo para kumita ko, hindi para matouch din natin yung ating mga estudyante. Thank you! Okay, so we'll wait for 30 more seconds for your questions. After that, um, we'll no longer answer questions.
Okay, it seems that no one has uh, any questions now. Now let's move on to our concluding statement to be delivered by Prof. Jocelyn M. Edilio. Good afternoon, everyone. Truly, all that starts well ends well. As a concluding part, our second webinar lecture series focuses on modular approach, wherein it advocates the self-discovery learning, exploration, and meaningful learning theory. It emphasizes that the more personal learning is, the more chances of effective learning will be. It also enhances your students' capacity to think critically and creatively, and it homes their innovativeness. We have a long way of preparation for the new normal scheme, so topics such as this one is very important to us. Because of that, brace yourself for more, because our college, under the leadership of our hardworking dean, Dr. Jennifer E. Tolang, is untiringly leading us into the right path. That is promoting the Education 4.0. Before I end, I would like to thank all of you for spending your time with us. Of course, congratulations to our wonderful speakers, Professor Archie Alferrer, Professor Edita C. Mateo, and Professor Bernadette B. Gomez. Thank you for the learnings you have shared with us today. And of course, congratulations to the persons behind this event, the organizing team, headed by Professor Mark Vincent Manlangit and Professor... Angelica De Parisan. A big clap for a job well done. So that's all for now. See more of you for the next online CED activities. So stay tuned. Thank you and God bless us all. Thank you, Professor Jocelyn M. Idilio. Now, for the certificates, please, uh, you can see in your screen, we have this QR code or the link for the Google form. Uh, you will answer that in order for you to receive a certificate. And there is a passing score, okay, eight. Eight. If you get the score of eight, then automatically you will get a certificate. And I know that you all will get it because lahat naman kayo nakinig. And so, the deadline of submission is until 8 p.m. tonight. Again, so once again, thank you so much and uh, keep safe. And until the next uh, webinar lecture series, the part three. Thank you so much and God bless us all.